Hey, this is Carlos from Hybrid Records, and in this video, I'm gonna be showing you five uh, grails from my personal collection, coming up. All right, so like I just said, I'm gonna be showing you five grail records or holy grail records from my personal collection. And I'm gonna talk a little bit more about what that means and how I feel about that term in general. Uh, I have thoughts and opinions on it, surprise, surprise. But first, if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, hit the bell icon so you get a notification whenever we post new videos. Follow us on Instagram and Twitter at Hybrid Records TX, Facebook.com slash Hybrid Records TX, and Hybrid Records TX.com is the home base. You already know what it is. Um, now that I'm filming these in my listening room, there's usually a record that was just played right before I film this. And so I kind of want to start each of these videos now by showing you. Uh, the record that I was most recently listening to and talking very briefly about it. Uh, so that's how I'm gonna start off all of these videos going forward, or at least all the videos that are filmed in this room. Maybe there's some remote stuff that happens at some point, we'll see, I don't know. Anything can happen. Um, so that record in this particular instance is Blaze Foley, Live at the Outhouse. I was listening to this because this is the May record of the month for the Hybrid Record Club. That is a record of the month service that we do at the shop. You can find out more about it on our website by clicking the Hybrid Record Club tab at the top navigation bar. Um, but yeah, so I was giving this a spin. This was put out by our friends at End of an Year in collaboration with Lost Art Records. It is a killer record, and we're gonna talk more about Blaze Foley here in a moment. But first, let's talk about the term or referring to a record as a holy grail. Um, for the sake of thoroughness, let's just talk about where that comes from, even though it's kind of obvious. Grail, short for holy grail. Holy grail meaning uh, an item that is scarce, an item that is um, hard to find, and that a lot of effort and time is put into locating said item. You have to go on an epic quest to find these records, uh, if we were referring to a record as a holy grail. That's what that would mean. Uh, I think that it is time for the vinyl community and record collectors as a whole uh, to retire this term. Um, the internet has made it so that we can get almost anything we want at any time. You just have to have the money to spend on it. What the term grail should mean when we're describing a record as such, uh, there are now fewer and fewer and fewer records that actually meet this criteria. You can just go on the internet and get almost anything these days. And, uh, a lot of the records that I'm about to show are this are, are that's how they are. You can go online and probably get them right now as soon as you're done watching this video. And so I think the internet has just made the term null and void, and we should just move on. We should just come up with some new vocabulary, some new vernacular to describe what we used to use the word grail for. Because uh, really, as long as you have enough money, you can get almost anything that you want these days at any given time, for the most part. Now, it's not true for everything, and we'll talk about that in a little bit, but first, let's get into the records. All right, so the five records that I pick are not necessarily the five rarest or the five most valuable or the five anything for my collection. I just kind of went through and looked uh, to see what I, I had that I wanted to talk about, and I just kind of picked stuff until I had five. Well, four, because the last record I always knew I was going to be talking about. And honorable mention to this typo negative box set. That was kind of grailish for a while. Um, but it's in the collection now, baby. Uh, so, first, uh, when I first started collecting records, uh, if you know we've ever talked about the history of the shop, uh, if you've been in the shop and we've talked about that before, uh, we've probably discussed, and I may have discussed on the channel previously, that one of the first things that I really got into collecting um, early on was soundtracks. I was real big into soundtracks, and I still am to a certain degree, um, but one of the soundtracks that I wanted whenever I first started, uh, first started collecting them was the Lost in Translation soundtrack. It's a film by Sofia Coppola. Here it is. Um, I, there wasn't an official pressing of this at the time, and I did have a bootleg in the collection at one point, um, but this one was released for Record Store Day 2019. Uh, it's on this like violet color situation. It's got some great stuff. Uh, Kevin Shields, My Bloody Valentine, Jesus and the Mary Chain, a really killer song by Phoenix, uh, Too Young. 
And I was stoked whenever this got an official release because I just had the bootleg. Now, for the sake of full transparency, on Record Store Day, I really don't keep a lot of stuff um, until like the end of the day. I'll see what's left and pick some things up. I certainly don't ever keep anything that we only got like one or two copies of. This year, for the, in this case, I think we got 10 of these, maybe eight, something like that. And so I was like, you know what? But after this, like the vinyl color, love the soundtrack, gotta have it. Kept it. And um, I was looking on Discogs. These things have gone up in price a lot, um, like 150 bucks or something, which I kind of wasn't expecting because I think they made a good amount of them, though it hasn't been re-released since Record Store Day. So that's how it goes sometimes. Um, this next one is a classic, needs no introduction, Captain Beefheart Trout Mask Replica. This is my second original copy that I've had of this, straight label. Um, I sold the other one at some point because that's my job is to sell records, uh, so it happens. But um, this one came in a collection that I bought last year of about 10,000 records or so. I bought it from a good friend of mine, and so and it's even got his initials. You can't really see them. They're just like written in pen or whatever, but his name written over there. And so I was like, you know what? I'm going to keep this one. It's got my friend's name on it. It was a huge... Uh, moment for the shop buying a collection of that size and of that quality and so now even though i might upgrade this copy at some point it's this is about a vg copy uh plays pretty well um but definitely you know if i found an upgrade at the right price i would take it but this is one that i'll always keep because um it'll remind me of that time which hopefully history will show was a game changer for the shop i don't know if that's how things will play out or not hopefully they do um, and then I'll, you know, I'll remember my buddy that uh, I bought this collection from. He helped me out a lot in the early days of the shop, uh, selling me records uh, so that I could, you know, really have a lot of good stuff for people to dig through for big events like Record Store Day or our anniversary or whatever. So uh, definitely must have very polarizing album. Um if you haven't listened to it, you should check it out. You'll probably hate it. Most people do. <laughs> Most people do. Um, but the people that love it, love it. And the people that get it, really get it. I'm one of those people. I hope that you are too. Because if you're not, honestly, kind of missing out a little bit. So I don't know what to tell you. All right, the third record that I'm going to show you. This one is kind of a grail-ish. It's grail adjacent. Um... You can probably go on Discogs and buy it right now for a couple hundred bucks. Um, but I found this one just in the bins um, at the Austin Record Convention, which uh, I'll be going to this year. Uh, for it didn't happen last year. Excited to go this year, bring some stuff back for the shop. Um, but yeah, it was the last day I went to go uh, to this British guy's booth. He had an original copy of The Open Mind, which is a great psych record. Really hard to find originals of that. And I just wanted to see it with my own two eyeballs and hold it in my hands. I uh, couldn't afford it. It was a couple thousand dollars, I think. Maybe three. Um, but then I was just going through the rest of his stuff. And, you know, on the last day, people start wheeling and dealing and stuff. And so I pulled this record out of the bins. I said, how much is this? He said, uh, I think he said 30 or 40, something like that. Um, and so I bought it. The Late Great Towns Van Zandt. Original poppy label there. This is a really great um, country Americana. I don't know. Uh, great songwriting on this record. Um, I don't need to tell you that Towns is great. Everybody knows it at this point, I feel, I hope. And if you don't, go check it out right now. Um, but I was, yeah, I was stoked that I found this just in the bins on the last day. Nobody had picked it up. It, I mean, it should have gone day one, really. Even though it's not in the greatest of shape, it's like a VG copy. Um a lot of it plays VG Plus pretty well, um, but on Poncho and Lefty, there's a, a little mark on it that makes some clicks, you know, you know get the as it spins, which is kind of a bummer, but I've got Poncho and Lefty on the Best of Towns Van Zandt, which Fat Possum put out. Um, so no real loss there. And this one has Don't Let the Sunshine Fool You on side A, one of my favorite town songs. Um, so very stoked to have this. And um, again... Like I said with Trout Mask Replica, if I ever found an upgrade copy for the right price, I would definitely snag it. Uh, but for now, I got this one, and it's awesome. Love it. Love listening to that one. 
All right, so the last two, this is where we get into kind of more traditional, I feel, grail definition status. Um, these are both pretty rare and kind of hard to find. Um, so let's just get straight into it. The first one, Crime and Stereo is Dead. Uh, this is one of the greatest punk albums of the aughts. I believe it came out in 2008. Uh, I should have looked that up, I guess. But also one of the most criminally underrated and slept on punk bands of that period as well, Crime and Stereo. Absolutely fantastic. Um, but this is a test pressing. Uh, the record itself is not that hard to find and obviously has like actual cover art and not just the title stenciled and spray painted on here. But this is a test pressing. Um, and then down here, you can't really see it because it's obscured by the inner sleeve. Uh, number 10 of 20. 10 of 20. I believe this is a test pressing for the second print run they did, uh, the reissue in 2013. Still crazy. Um, one of the first like really big purchases that I made uh, really ran up the eBay auction on this one. And it was early in my record collecting time. It was... Uh, maybe about a year before I opened the shop and um, I was starting to really buy a lot more at that time and looking for more collectible stuff too, which, you know, when you first start, you're just getting the records that you like and a lot of those tend or sometimes can be easy to find. Uh, they were mostly for me, again, internet. Boom, order it, done. Uh, but I saw this one was going up for auction by the label to raise money for something or another. I don't remember off the top of my head what it was. And I was like, I gotta have it. And I had also just lost, actually, I just lost out on a test pressing of, I was trying to describe you to someone, which was their album after this, currently their final album, although for the past like, what, five or six years, they've been telling us they have a new album coming. So hopefully it's not their last album, but it's also a fantastic album. If you like, um, when guitars sound like synthesizers, I was trying to describe you to someone, is fantastic. Um, Crime and Stereo is Dead maintains a little more of their punk hardcore aesthetic, but adding in more like dreamy, kind of atmospheric guitars and vocals and just experimenting a little bit with it. It's fantastic. Now the last one is the grailest of all my grails. Um, it is not, it's not rarer than that in turn, it's not rare than that test pressing in terms of quantity produced, um, but it does have the most interesting story and it is very difficult to find. Um, I'll show you what the record is and then we'll talk about the story behind it. This is Blaze Foley's self-titled uh, debut full-length LP, only full-length LP, um, or proper full-length LP uh, to be released during his life. It came out on Vital Records. You can see. Oh, it's blurry. Uh, and, okay, the story behind this record. Blaze was a songwriter, musician, hung out with Towns Van Zandt a lot, stuff like that, and he had, you know, had some drinking problems and personal problems and things, never really quite got it together, never really made it, um, but he was incredibly talented, one of the great American songwriters, in my opinion, um, and... It just was having a hard time getting his music out there. The one person he could find that was willing to put money behind him ended up, I think, being involved in some criminal activity because uh, what happened was is this record was pressed uh, and 500 copies were made. You know, kind of unknown guy, sizable, you know, a reasonable print run for that type of situation. And Blaze is hanging out with his buddies at the label guys like office or whatever and the DEA raids the place um, they come in they see all this guy's assets they're throwing him in witness protection the guy who owned the label um, and Blaze is just drunk sitting there watching the feds take all of the only record he's ever gotten to make um, so the feds feeling kind of sorry for this you know somewhat pitiful man who can't get a shit in fair shake or can't catch a break uh, they decide they're, they're going to let him keep 100 copies of this, of the 500 print run, and they incinerate the other 400. So only 100 copies of this ever made it into circulation. And presumably, the story goes that Blaze himself distributed all of them, mostly trading them for beer, uh, selling them at shows and stuff. 
So the reason why this one for me will always be a grail and will always be one of my most prized possessions in my record collection is because the odds are very high that at some point Blaze Foley himself held this exact record in his hand. And that's crazy. There's not a lot of records out there that you can make draw that conclusion about you can make that assumption about and even though this isn't even remotely close to my favorite recording of his i think it's a little flashy and overproduced it's got the muscle shoals horns on it there's a lot of kind of glossier production that went into this when blazed in my opinion is at his finest with the m most minimal accompaniment even just him and his guitar which is why live at the outhouse which i talked about at the beginning of this video is such a fantastic recording of him I still have this. I have the reissue, the end of an year released, again with Lost Art. Um, and it will always be a stalwart of my record collection. It will always be a pillar of my record collection. And I do enjoy spinning it from time to time. I mean, Girl Scout Cookies is a fun song. Um, Oval Room is great. Picture Cards on this is nice. Um, even though, like I said, it's kind of glossier production. Um, my Reasons Why, good song. Um, great songs on here, just a little overproduced for my taste. <clears throat> Still an enjoyable listen. So that has been five of the rare stuff from my collection. I'll pr probably do another uh, installment of this at some point. Uh, there's definitely records that I currently have. Um, that I could have talked about that I didn't for the sake of time, even though this will still probably be a ridiculously long 15, 20 minute video because I cannot seem to keep them under 10. Um, and yeah, let me know. Um, drop a comment. Uh, tell me some of your grails from your record collection or uh, you know, tell me what kind of videos you want to see us do in the future, what kind of topics that you would like me to cover. I'd be happy to do it. 